Welcome, Age of Vintage Society. Ladies and gentlemen, I feel very obliged to talk about one lady I admire so much each time I see her image on the screen. It is several years down the line, but the feeling remains the same. Her name is Elizabeth Ashley, the beautiful lady and dazzling actress who left her home state for American theatre fame. Some think she is an opportunist, but beyond her good fortune in the industry, there is an innate talent that made her a star of international repute. What was wrong with Elizabeth Ashley's voice? I want you to know, my viewers, how much I appreciate you. Without your support, these videos wouldn't be possible. Thank you for those who hit the thanks button. How stunning and vibrant Elizabeth Ashley appeared from a mucky upbringing into the entertainment scene with her sultry talent and quickly rose to fame remains a mystery for many, especially those of us who tried our luck in acting a bit before retiring to the journalism profession. Did Ashley drop from the sky to have wowed her audience the way she did? She practically took the New York entertainment scene by surprise when she emerged from nowhere with her young and engaging flair to become a subject of media analysis with her performance. New York theatre fans were all struck with her shows, leading to an early Tony Award for her interpretation of the character known as Molly in the 1961 Broadway production of Take Her, She's Mine. Although I did not see those of her early stage performances, almost everything I have heard about her beginning as a performer is remarkably commendable. When I started watching her latter acts, her exotic look and the air of prestige around her, expressions often throw up bizarre but lovely imaginations in me. Oh, forgive me, before I digress from the essence of this discussion, Florida-born Elizabeth Ashley is an American actor who is today highly respected for her brave and hearty roles on screen. Her popularity grew mainly from her Broadway outings, but she excelled in almost every aspect of the entertainment medium. The latter generations are already enjoying several of her films and television shows. Recently christened the Russian Doll because of her more encompassing successes in the contemporary entertainment scene, Ashley ultimately stole the show with her talent on stage and in movies as early as the last part of the 1950s. After tasting an early stage success, Elizabeth's career continued gradually but on a steady upward trend. Her journey began in 1958, when Elizabeth honed her promising talent by playing a role in the West End musical known as Espresso Bongo in its original London production. A year after she made her Broadway debut in a brief vacation drama titled The Highest Tree, it was not until 1964 that she hit the big screen with the hit movie version of Harold Robbins' bestseller, the Carpetbaggers, which instantly gave her a Golden Globe nomination as a supporting actress. This suffice to say that led to years of active services both on the big and small screens, including Burt Reynolds' comedy series Evening Shade, which left her with an Emmy nominee. Though her journey to stardom may have appeared easy owing to her smooth sailing in the industry, but make no mistake about that, her road to success is not and has never been easy. Elizabeth Ashley was born Elizabeth Ann Cole in 1939, somewhere in Ocala, Florida. Her early background is not one with cheering news, because before her one-year birthday her parents were already separated. It was an incident that set a foundation for a totally unpalatable childhood experience. Her mother quickly hurled her away from her father and relocated within the Baton Rouge vicinity for a greener pasture. This is where she was securely raised under ups and downs. Ashley was lucky to get into a high school adjacent the Louisiana State University. She later said that the school was not what anyone would wish for a loved one, but that her mother had no better choice, because the school was not just in front of a football training ground, but shockingly opposite what she described as Fraternity Row. It wasn't the worst high school, but it wasn't what my mother wanted, in her words. The young, beautiful, intelligent and humble Ashley soon became interested in education and later found herself at Louisiana State University, where she did a semester before dropping out for her nature-given career part. 
With little or no support, she had always known that she would not go far academically, so she took a wise decision when she relocated to New York, where her Broadway career was beckoning. After playing that Molly Michelson role in Take Her, She's Mine, she got a powerful place in theatre performance, with critics recommending her to directors. The massive praises at such a tender age were said to have caused her a brief nervous breakdown. Her fearless image on the screen is somewhat similar to her real-life character. At least that is what it seems for some reason. I heard that when Elizabeth's old-time pal Mary Martin was involved in an ugly love relationship incident with a man, Ashley was available to defend her friend. The story was that the accused took carnal advantage of Mary without her consent. Elizabeth was said to have bravely testified against the offender at Nashville Metro Court. It was entirely an act of friendship, but the success of that incident made her reveal her own shocking secret that may have burdened her for years. I'm not sure what the true situation was for this intelligent lady, but there were hints that Ashley may have been manhandled by three men some years ago. The effect the incident left on her was so grave that it made an indelible mark on her. Some sources said the incident may have happened in 1977. Regardless of how or when it occurred, I can understand how helpless it would have been trying to fight off three drunken men at a secured gas station somewhere around the lonely stretch of Interstate 5, behind Bakersville in California. The men eventually stole everything from her, including money and related belongings, and left her with a severely bruised body and helplessly stranded on the isolated highway. And that was it. Whether the incident was a planned attack on her personality by enemies trying to get back at her, or a mere theft that went wrong, would have been a question for the authorities to answer. The incident, however, left her traumatised for years. Elizabeth was hit so hard by her ordeal that she stayed isolated for hours inside her lavatory, washing off whatever she felt was left on her. It also affected her social life as she refused to go outside or talk to anyone. Was it so severe on her that she even struggled to face her son when she returned to Los Angeles? To make matters worse, Ashley had nowhere to turn for help, because everything that happened was done by unfamiliar faces that did not leave a trace. She was also not strong enough in spirit to report to the authorities. The incident obviously made her doubt her caring abilities, as she had at all times been doing to her son. This was not the end of the story, because nearly a year after, Elizabeth willingly discarded everything she had by selling them off, and took her son to his father before relocating to St. Barthélemy, the Caribbean island. After some time on the island, with her son making regular visits, Ashley was totally rejuvenated with a fresh spirit. Expectedly, she returned to see and seek her mother in 1981, she was virtually penniless and was willing to regain her status in the entertainment scene. So took the offer to host an episode of Saturday Night Live. I guess she must have overcome all that now, even though the memory stayed with her for a very long time, especially as she performed a therapist role in Broadway's Agnes of God. Elizabeth Ashley has also spoken about her lucky beginning in the entertainment industry. She explained how she met a gentleman on a flight to New York, the man that was winning the $64,000 question quiz show every week. He had asked her to be part of the audience. That fateful day was her day too in New York City. She said, I sat among the audience and the cameraman kept zooming close-ups of me. A friend of her mother back home had immediately put a call to Ashley's mother and said to her, Liz is on television. Then Ashley was still a teenager with a big dream of penetrating the exciting New York showbiz with her cuteness. If she must make it in this vibrant city, she must start from somewhere. So it was not very long before she started working as a waiter before shifting to work as a designer's model for Jonathan Logan. On being a designer's model, she said her role was more like being a human mannequin rather than the usual runway model. Based on her remark, the position was at the base of the salary ladder, but the income was just enough to take care of her expenses at the YWCA. Ashley said she frequented Neighbourhood Playhouse School of Theatre at the time. It was more like a second home to her. I was there all day every day, she said, recalling how Sandy Meisner was teaching acting while Martha Graham would be busy providing dance lessons. The atmosphere was fun for many reasons. 
One of them, as she vividly recalls, was Meisner, who she said never believed in auditions. She said he did not bother himself whether any actress was making improvement or not. This includes bad habits and the like. She still recalled learning together with the likes of James Kahn, Brenda Vaccaro, Dabney Coleman and others. That was how powerful the personalities were at the Playhouse within the period. Personalities like Sidney Pollack, Ashley said, were a gopher when she was in the Playhouse. Because of the quality of talent there was kind of a healthy competition, though very daunting and the training itself was very demanding. First, to be part of the Playhouse you had to accept you would live in New York City from September to May, without any other work-related distractions though many like Ashley lied because they worked night duty so they can keep body and soul going. Remember she had to take care of her bills while also pursuing her dream career. To be frank, she had a lot of advantages because she was given a scholarship that allowed her to work in every area that met her fancy and do things she thinks she could do. The team sometimes would do scenes that will have agents from MCA monitoring their performances, including William Morris, was often invited to come and watch performances. Ashley recalled doing a scene from The Crucible that got her a lot of positive attention. The thing is that I've always been good at the going nuts part, she declared. Her special vocal was an edge, she said, and maintained that the voice had been with her all her life, and it's terrific because people hear her talk and make a hasty conclusion about what her life is like. They just have lurid, turgid fantasies about your life. If she said so, Ashley definitely knows what she is talking about. The voice itself, as described by a writer, is much like a female baritone that echoes like it's been on fire and cured by cigarettes and southern comfort, in other words, a husky purr, and is said to be extremely seductive. In case you are yet to capture the voice being described here, you can look through her past and take a cursory look at some of her productions. While everyone around her thought she had a problem with that voice, Ashley insisted that it was natural to her. When I was three, I remember mothers at Sunday school would say to my mother, you ought to take her to a doctor, she explained. And soon her mother took her to some doctors. Each of the doctors left them more curious after the medical examination until a more qualified New Orleans doctor told her mother that Ashley has no medical issue with her voice. Nothing wrong with the girl. She got fat vocal cords and she's got a whiskey voice all her life. Get used to it. The words of the doctor. And when she began her stage career, the voice issue also came up. I was never an ingenue. But why? Ashley said she was never seen as or referred to as the girl in the show. The best she got was when Mike Nichols was directing her. She still remembered thinking, What am I doing? And the director said, You're the girl. Just be the girl adding that the role she was doing at the time was the hardest thing for her to do. Elizabeth Ashley got married three times with a son to cherish because all her marriages ended the way they had started, in regrettable divorces. The first matrimony was during her Broadway stint. She had met actor James Farentino and fell for him. They too got things going romantically and later cemented their union in 1962. About three years later that marriage hit a brick wall. After that one ended, Elizabeth got smitten by her co-star in The Carpetbaggers, George Peppard Jr. Their stage romance soon led to marriage in 1966. The union produced her only son, Christian, but like the former, Elizabeth and George called it quits in 1972. While Elizabeth was cooling off on the Caribbean island, she had several jaw operations after she got badly injured from a ghastly marine accident. Within that period, her career stagnated a bit, or was she really on a career break? Recall that she returned with low self-confidence because of all she had been through. She tried the matrimonial bliss for the third time with James McCarthy, but did not find anything different from the previous ones, leading to the third divorce, and since then, there is no reason to believe that she would be going into another marriage at this time. In 1999, Elizabeth got a jolt while preparing her memoir, her rented apartment in New York went aflame, damaging all her souvenirs. But she was lucky to recover a partly burnt bag that may have had over $10,000. Reports later emerged that the fire may have been caused by a flaming cigarette that Elizabeth had flung in the trash after having her breakfast that morning. Currently, Elizabeth Ashley 
is quietly living a non-ceremonial lifestyle that she very much deserved as an icon and a senior citizen. Elizabeth Ashley's husky voice surprised the audience, but in other circles the public was surprised by something else. How Maureen O'Sullivan's exposed body caused public outrage. Watch this video.